Today is a great day for Canadians. Obviously, you're well aware that we last night came to an agreement with the United States on the renegotiations of a new NAFTA deal. The number one export industry in the country is the auto industry. And I am absolutely thrilled that we were able to A, put into place a format that will lead to investment in Canada, continued investment in Canada, but as important, getting rid of the absolute threat of the 25% tariff uh, that the Donald Trump administration has been threatening for quite a while. If you take a look at the overall deal, we really did meet the major objectives. And it was about solidifying the footprint, um, ensuring that uh, the jobs were not going to continue to bleed and go to, uh, to, to Mexico. If you take a look at what has transpired over the last 24 years, in the original NAFTA, we had a trade surplus in manufacturing. Today, we have a $120 billion deficit. Why? Because of the low wages in Mexico, the corrupt structure that they have in Mexico. But all of that has been fixed. But other huge victories today is the fact that Canada was able to wrestle back the clause that really talked about energy ratcheting, which gave the United States more access, frankly, to our oil reserves than we had more control. So that issue has been resolved, which is such a major, major victory for Canadians. We were able to make sure that the dispute mechanism within the original NAFTA agreement is preserved so that we can have a fair adjudication process in our disputes with the United States. The whole cultural exemption is in place, which really prevented the United States from really taking control of the media sector here in Canada. So if I'm a worker today in the media sector, the auto sector, so many manufacturing sectors, I'm feeling a lot more comfortable today than I have over the last 24, 25 years because the government was absolutely able to reach consensus, to come to an agreement on things that were very, very important to Canadians. What, 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 what about, about the people who are in the dairy industry so, and who are really so not comfortable? So there's, there's, there's a couple pieces of this that I'm not very comfortable with because there, there's not... Listen, if I would have wrote this trade deal, it would be much different than the one we're looking at. So if I'm a dairy farmer today, am I concerned? The answer is yes, uh, because the digital asset was, uh, access was given uh, just like it was in CETA and just like it was in the TPP. But I do know that the Canadian government is sitting down with the Dairy Farmers Association and they're talking about the solutions as it relates to how they can continue to invest uh, in the industry. Are you, what, am I, what I'm also concerned about was the changes to intellectual property. Uh, the whole issue of uh, extending the patent um, on biological drugs from eight to 10 years, that's gonna be a very costly for Canada. But I do expect this, that this government will be announcing uh, sometime prior to the next election, a national pharmacare program, which should give Canadians incredible relief that the escalating cost of drugs isn't gonna impact them directly. Are, are you okay with the, uh, that uh, the national security tariffs remain in place on steel and aluminum to be dealt with uh, at a date to be determined because that's still a significant manufacturing uh, base in Ontario. Correct? Absolutely. I would have, I have preferred to, for it to be resolved. The answer is yes. But what we were fa facing with was a U.S. proposal right up until the last minute, uh, which would have really put quotas on, on, on Canadian steel going to the United States. So we are much better off today fighting it through the 232 process, which has now been re-entrenched, uh, re as opposed to living uh, to an arbitrary uh, number uh, that would have caused us a generational problem. We couldn't live with a quota. And like I said, so we were able to push that off, and now we're gonna deal with it through conventional methods. So are you surprised that Canada was able to strike a deal with the US given the unpredictable nature of the president? The United States finally came to their senses. They finally understood they needed a deal. The Trump administration hasn't had much success in anything he's touched recently. So things started to change when the United States understood uh, that we weren't moving on the dispute mechanism. Canada's cultural exemption needed to be in place. We weren't going to bend on the auto industry. So once the United States understood where we were at, uh, then things started to change and, and the, the environment became conducive. To an agreement. But he kept saying that what he wanted was milk, 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 and he got it. No, he wanted a heck of a lot more than milk. Uh, but he didn't hit the home run that he was looking for either. Um, am I thrilled about the, the dairy piece? The answer is no. Uh, but ultimately, I think there's going to be a solution uh, based on the uh, discussions that have already taken place between the government and the Dairy Association.
how long do you think until Donald Trump changes his mind again and decides, you know, if the election midterms don't go well for him, he want, might want to change the deal? No, I think sometime this morning between when he puts on his first and his second stock, there will probably be a change in, in what, he, what his next plan is. He can't do anything about the auto industry, that's clear. Uh, the, the, the energy industry, look, the deal is done. And so the whole uncertainty around some of the key economic factors that impact Canadians has really been resolved. Any so concerns he, about this six-year sunset clause? And what does that do for long-term manufacturing investment? Um, the, there is the six-year sunset clause, from what I understand. My understanding is that they, they move more to a 16-year review. So that's not going to play any sort of a role as it relates to uh, to investment. And the 16-year, it's, it's really just about a review. It's not about shutting the deal down. And ultimately, if the deal doesn't work, there should be a mechanism where we can get back to the bargain table and fix it. Uh, the problem with trade deals historically is it's always been about free movement of capital. It's never been about people. And what I'm thrilled about this deal is we actually talked about people. We spent a lot of time talking about Canadian workers, American workers, Mexican workers. The labor chapter goes a long way in alleviating so much of what's been wrong with the original NAFTA. So, am I comfortable? The answer is yes. Is it a perfect deal? The answer is no. But are we better off today than we have been over the last 24 years? I'll say emphatically the answer is yes. Great. It's too early for us to think about this. Now you know how I feel. <laughs> Thank you so, so I didn't ask if you were, if Canada was, if the people of Canada were your union members, you would recommend, uh, you would recommend, I would recommend, the approval of this deal? Absolutely. It this is, it's not perfect, and nor will I ever profess it to be. But have we come a long way? The answer is yes. Did we really plug a lot of the holes that have existed for 24 years? The answer is yes. We got rid of the ISDS clause, the investor clause. Yes, yes, yes. So that's gone. That in itself is a huge home run. So there's there's a lot of progressive pieces, and this is a perfect. Once again, the answer is no, but we've come a long way. Yeah, just, just on that piece, there was a lot of uh, hope around the progressive elements. You said the, the huh? labor chapter goes a long way. What about other Well, if you address if, the camera. Okay. Look, if I'm looking at this from a progressive point of view, there are huge victories. Number one, the whole ISDS clause, the investor clause that allows corporations to sue our government is gone. If I take a look at the whole energy ratcheting clause that gave the United States, frankly, preference as it relates to our oil and energy sector, that's gone. Um, if I take a look at the potential of the auto tariffs, that's gone. So there are some incredible victories in this deal, things that we've been arguing and fighting for for the last 24 years. What about the indigenous chapter? The indigenous chapter didn't, uh, didn't get any traction, but we're dealing, if you can imagine, with the U.S. administration that has signed one, one, of the ILO declarations. They wouldn't even agree to the clause on gender equality. 2018, gender equality, they wouldn't even talk about it. Absolutely ridiculous. When we're dealing with an economic climate where women make probably 26 to 30% less than men.